Do you want to kick us off since you're here, Mr. Well, Kinsler? I'm here. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> okay, I'm going to call to order um, the meeting of the Housing Steering Committee. And we'll start with a roll call. Thank you, Committee Member Harov. I'm here. Committee Member Paulson. Here. Committee Member Kunzler. Here. And I'll note Committee Member Wagstaff is absent. Okay. Um, I guess we need a motion to approve the minutes of November 17th, 2022. I'd be happy to make that motion. Second. Yes. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Yes, right. Yep. Okay, motion. The motion passes. And I guess we're on to the um, substance of the meeting to receive information, discuss, and receive public comments on the draft housing element 2023 to 2031. Uh, and that um, that element has been available for public review uh, on the um, Living in Larsford website. Okay. Um, thank you. And I'm Elise Simone, and I'm the Community Development Director, and I'm just up here tonight just so that uh, Mr. Kunzler isn't the only person sitting at the Slowly. <laughs> front of the council <laughs> chambers. Um, and we have our consultant, EM, um, Andy Flower from EMC, here tonight to do an um, overview of the housing element for you. And so I'm going to turn it over to him. Thank you, Elise. Happy to be here, and uh, happy to be here with with all the committee members, and I'll share my my screen for a, a PowerPoint presentation. Let's see. Just one moment. Thank you for your patience. There you go. Big. If I can just get it to cooperate. There we are. Okay. So here we are, Larkspur's six cycle housing element update, steering committee meeting. And uh, tonight is an exciting night because we're in the middle of our uh, public review of the initial draft for that housing element update. We just did the roll call. We understand that Mr. Wagstaff was not able to attend, but the other three committees are here. Uh, additional outreach, we wanna welcome, if we have in the audience tonight, anyone representing showing up for racial justice, Marin, Multicultural Center Marin, and or Marin City Art Gallery. We have our DEI specialist, uh, Lee Robinson, who has reached out to these organizations and has worked with them closely and has uh, specifically invited them tonight. So welcome if you're here and if you're otherwise seeing this on video, welcome as well. So our agenda tonight, uh, we're gonna go through four parts. The initial part, some of you may have seen before and certainly the committee members are well aware of this, but we wanna make sure that anyone new to the process, maybe you've received a postcard, maybe you're watching this after the fact and and maybe you wanna jump in and understand better about the housing element update and what we're doing and why it's important to be engaged and involved. So we're just gonna go over uh, some of the basics. And then we're gonna talk a little more specifically about some policies and uh, how they relate to the programs and the goals. We'll talk generally about sites and then, and then I'll show you quickly how you can get to the website to see all of the details that we're hinting at at tonight's presentation and ways in which you can provide your feedback. We've heard from a few people so far, but we'd sure love to hear from more of you. Okay, so we're starting broad brush. What is a housing element? It's a visionary yet detailed policy document. This is part of the general plan. It's so therefore it's required by state law and different from the other sections of the um, general plan, this gets updated every eight years. This sets the stage to accommodate both the existing and projected future need for housing. And Larkspur is, is uh, unique in um, the APAG region. There's, there's a few 
uh, jurisdictions like yours, who is undergoing a general plan update almost, well, now it has become simultaneous with the housing element update. So that um, that just makes us unique. And, and so we have some unique opportunities around that. So the housing element is the chapter in the general plan we're talking about tonight. And within this chapter, uh, we include a list of sites where we believe housing should go in the near future, in this eight year cycle, how many units could be built on each of these potential sites. We also get involved with programs and policies to encourage development. It's important to note though that the city of Larkspur doesn't necessarily build the housing. We'll get into um, some exceptions to that uh, later in the evening. So key components of the housing element, we need to make sure we have the analysis of the housing need, evaluation of constraints, identification of sites, and that we have a housing plan that includes the goals, policies, programs, objectives, and special to the sixth cycle, we need to make sure that our policy document has a focus on affirmatively furthering fair housing. And, and that needs to be pervasive throughout the document and through our public engagement. Just to clarify the roles, uh, tonight we're with the steering committee and uh, city staff, Elise, uh, and um, a few other staff members, uh, along with EMC. That's I, I represent EMC, and we have a whole team of folks who work together with Elise to um, put together this draft document, and we've been touching base over and again with the steering committee. Once we um, once we're ready to go for adoption, we'll be bringing it forward to the planning commission and then for, for recommendation, it goes to city council for adoption and finally HCD for certification. You might hear about an HCD submittal between uh, now and when we bring something forward to the planning commission. And that's because there, there is a new law that started just as we got started on, on this housing element update. And what is required is that HCD gets to have a, a look at this before it goes for adoption with city council. So um, so we're excited about that step. And uh, there's also a public engagement process for 30 days. And that's where we're at right now. So the new law, and we'll get to it in a little bit, but it's um, we are uh, addressing that new law now with our 30-day public review process before we submit it for the preliminary draft review by HCD. So we we try to refrain from acronyms, but this is an acronym that you may have heard buzzed about. It's um, pronounced RENA, and it's the Regional Housing Needs Allocation. And it represents the number of homes allocated between now and um, 2031. And this is a, a number that has been assigned to all jurisdictions throughout the Bay Area region uh, by uh, ABAG. And, um, and so this is a number that is individual to Larkspur, and we're going to get to what that number, um, how the number is divided among affordability levels. And here we are. So for the very low income level, 291 units, we need to make sure that there is capacity for this number of units. Low income, 168 units, moderate, 145, above moderate income, 375 units. So we need to make sure that the zoning that's in place can accommodate for not only this number of units, but that the, that there is a variety of housing types and that there is a, a, an ability for variable income levels um, to be uh, accommodated for. I see a hand raise. Mr. Haroff, would you like to comment? Oh, yes. No, um, th thanks for the uh, that introduction, uh, Andy, and I, and I appreciate that. And, um, and I want to welcome everyone who's participating in the meeting uh, tonight. Um, I just wanted to um, offer as a reminder to the public um, who may be participating in the meet uh, this evening's event, um, although those are the numbers that have been assigned to us by ABAG, um, they're not necessarily numbers that the city of Larkspur has agreed to. Um, we did challenge the assignment of the allocation that was provided to us by ABAG. 
Uh, we appealed that determination and the appeal was denied. So what we're working with is what we have based upon that administrative process. Um, not all of us are happy about it, but we're going to do it the best we can and really appreciate the efforts of Andy and your colleagues to try to uh, make sure that we're complying with our legal obligations because that's what we are doing here. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. If I may continue. Um, just to give a little bit of historic perspective, a little context for what our um, RENA number is now, 979. So while that seems certainly um, drastically different from the last eight-year cycle, there were um, housing cycles in the past, in the 80s and in the 90s, that were a lot closer to the number that we're working with this for this cycle. We also can count on the number of units that have been constructed uh, between um, June of this year and January of next year. So that 67 number of units brings our arena down, down to now 912 instead of 979. And, and thank you for that uh, interlude, Mr. Hoff, helping us understand that, that this is our legal requirement and um, and there are consequences if, if we do not bring Larkspur into uh, compliance with HCD with our housing element update. And these are a few of them. I won't read through them. Nobody likes to talk about the negatives. <laughs> um, so why does Larkspur need to plan for more housing? We, just bringing it back to caring for our neighbors, ensuring that fellow residents can continue to live here, and also caring for our community, becoming a more inclusive Larkspur by creating more housing opportunities for all community members, both those who live here now and those who would like to live here. So moving on to our policies, programs, and goals. Bringing up also AB 686, this is affirmatively furthering fair housing. This is the new legal requirement for the sixth cycle housing element update process. And we need to make sure that our plan is showing um, that we're taking meaningful actions in Larkspur, in addition to combating discrimination, that overcome patterns of segregation and foster inclusive communities free from barriers that restrict access to opportunity based on protected characteristics. This is verbatim directly from the law. We want to make sure that our um, that our goals align with AFFH goals, that we address significant disparities in housing needs and in access to opportunity, that we replace segregated living patterns with truly integrated and balanced living patterns, and that our plan fosters and maintains compliance with civil rights and fair housing law. So these are the overarching goals that we've included with our with our uh, draft, preliminary draft, housing, housing update. So goal one, facilitate housing construction. Goal two, protect affordable housing and improve the housing stock. Goal three, provide new affordable and other special needs housing. Four, exemplify sustainable development and energy conservation. And lastly, goal five, publicize housing needs and resources. So we have a document that um, that may have been shared with the committee the, the last minute. Uh, this is also something that we're going to make available online. And if you didn't receive it, we'll make sure that this gets in your inbox by tomorrow. So we've we've heard a lot from the community. Larkspur's heard a lot from the community. Um, a lot of people have been brave enough to show up at council meetings. We've also had some outreach meetings that um, that specifically invited those who are are having uh, difficult experiences with housing insecurity. We have captured as, as many quotations as we could in order to um, in order to take those voices and and imbibe our plan with that specific need. So we've uh, created this matrix that that brings forward those voices with quotations. We recognize the concept, and then we um, we point we point it back to our policy document to show how our our um, plan is 
responsive to what we're hearing from the community. We've also shared a, uh, a program matrix that, that shows, um, it's sort of in cliff note form, all of the programs together in one document, along with the title, and whether or not each program is intended to meet the AFFH requirements. We also have transit-oriented community that we're, um, we're wanting to integrate and be cognizant of with our policies so that we can best prepare Larkspur for those grant opportunities. PRO stands for pro-housing, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, with each of our programs, we include a time frame and a milestone or metric. So th this screenshot of the, the full document includes um, a variety of different kinds of programs that we're, that we're um, providing in this draft document in moving forward. And here we have H1M. This is this is something that uh, we work together with staff on. We're very excited about this concept. Uh, it, it seems simple, but it's also important for us to include with each staff report that would involve housing a reminder about the state law. And this is a detail representing what that would be. So it sends a message to HCD that Larkspur is uh, aware of of the law and wanting to be reminded of the law with each decision that you make. And I'll just read the, the phrase here that's highlighted. It is the duty of local government decision makers to not reject or make infeasible housing development projects, including emergency shelters that contribute to meeting the need determined pursuant to California's Housing Ac Accountability Act without a thorough analysis of the economic, social, and environmental effects of the action. So pro-housing community, this is a pretty exciting brand new program, right? Uh, right out of the gate, this is the first year that HCD has made this available. And uh, it's it's pretty exciting that Larkspur is the first community in Marin County to apply for this program. Council adopted a resolution to apply on October 19th. The application was submitted on November 15th, and HCD's decision will be made on January 6th. And uh, th there's a, a minimum requirement of 30 points. Those points um, uh, end up relating directly to potential grant money. So when I said Larkspur doesn't build the housing, there might be ways in which there could be public partner, public private partnerships, or in, in some way, Larkspur may be able to share grant money with um, the ability to impact the number of affordable units within the city. That's going to help you meet your arena. And in the end, that also helps reduce the total number of units that would need to be built in Larkspur. And that's because the number of affordable units is a pretty high ratio of the total units. So the more you can improve your chances of getting those affordable units built, the less total units would need to be built. So what is included with a sites inventory? Well, we started by looking at the sites that were used in the prior update. Um, we also wanted to make sure that we incorporated those sites that could accommodate low and very low income RENA. And the guidance we received from HCD for that is that it's um, to be able to focus on sites that are larger than a half acre, less than 10 acres. Those have been proven to more likely include affordable units. We, of course, considered our constraints. Uh, we, we brought in David Masonchen from ELS, Architecture and Urban Design, and he helped us with feasibility analysis. Uh, we looked at um, redevelopment infill sites. And uh, in the end, we have determined a list of we, what we believe is adequate sites. We probably have a few more sites than we need. So through this public review process, there might be some sites that end up um, not being on the list. So what is the plan for our sites? There is no rezoning plan for the update other than that there would be an overlay zone for the inventory sites only. And for these sites, objective design and developments standards will apply. 
these are standards that the steering committee has thoughtfully considered a process for updating or for integrating and adopting rather. And, uh, and that process is ongoing. And for those who would like to understand better what this might look like uh, beyond just the map, but what the actual buildings may look like. And if you want to impact that process, please continue to join us for these steering committee meetings into the new year. With that, I'll begin just a very broad brush overview of our site's inventory, and I'll show you after the presentation how you can get into the details of all of this on our website with lots of opportunities to comment directly. So we've got seven different areas, and within each area, there's most often multiple sites. For sites six and seven, they end up being areas unto themselves, and you can see that site seven is not yet part of our city um, boundary in Larkspur. So North Magnolia neighborhood, site 1A is, is a, a little more of a um, pipeline project because there is a project that's under review right now. Uh, and then we've got Green Bray neighborhood with multiple sites. Site 2A is not intended to be a redevelopment of that full site, but rather that the uh, parking lot would be a would be considered for development. Site 2C, for that site, it, it could be that those buildings could be rehabilitated and turned into housing, or it could be that the entire site could be redeveloped. Larkspur Landing neighborhood, again, we have site 3C, which is the mall. And the idea is not that the entire mall would go away, but rather there's there's one building that um, has outlived its usefulness uh, as a Bed Bath & Beyond. And there's an idea that maybe that individual site could become housing. 3D is the utility site, and there has been an intention for that to become housing. And moving forward, we wanna make sure that that has the kind of density and design standards that it needs to be a welcomed part of the community here in Larkspur. We have central Larkspur neighborhood and um, and for these four sites, again, we can, we can look into the details within the website and people can comment directly about each individual site. The downtown neighborhood is the area uh, west of the trail and we have Redwood Highway neighborhood, which is um, one particular site. We do have property owner interest at this location. 7A, as I, as I mentioned, is outside of the city boundary currently. There is a, um, a likely annexation process that will move forward for this site. Andy, this is Kevin again. Of course, yes. Hi. Just, just, just interrupt. Um, I just want to make sure that um, we're up to date in terms of the prospects for annexation on that property because I think Great. there have been some recent developments that call that into question. Oh, okay. So I want to make sure we're not taking too much credit for something that may not be uh, within our jurisdiction. Thank you for that. We have made sure that our assumptions for the site's analysis enables not only compliance with HCD law, but also um, retains our ability to be a contender for the pro-housing community program. So and, and, we and aren't that's banking fine. on the site. Yes, no, no, no. I, and, and, I understand, and I understand we're not, and I think we have a very robust program, but I just want to make sure that folks understand that the, the issue of annexation of that particular parcel is uh, maybe not going in the direction that we thought it might previously. Not as inevitable as we we thought early in the process. That Thank you. That's helpful. That is not a part, that is not a discussion that I'm privy to. So I, I, uh, I wasn't at, uh, myself until about 20 minutes ago. So. Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> Hot off the press. Then. Okay. Moving on. Let's see. Yes, so 
it's important for the public to understand that this is the most impactful time for, for you to share your ideas and your comments. When we're talking about the general plan, uh, this is this is the moment at, at which we, we include all of our aspirational goals for the city. And what that ends up uh, impacting is all, all kinds of decisions into the future, zoning decisions, opportunities for grants, and uh, often the public doesn't get involved until there's project that's been applied for. Well, that project is then measured according to the zoning and the zoning touches back on the general plan. So this is the source point for all of the development that will take place within the city. So, so we welcome your comments, your ideas, and um, and your concerns, of course. So we've got a deadline of December 19th, and this is just for, it, it's not that we won't listen to comments beyond that, but this is our 30 day comment period. All of these comments will be heard directly by not only your decision makers at the city of Larkspur, but also HCD. We are drafting a document that will be inclusive of all comments we hear during this period of time, and it includes our response. So, so far, we've heard from a few folks. We've received eight comments from our website, and we've received nine letters directly via email. The common themes expressed, there's uh, questions about water supply, traffic congestion and parking, demolition of Lucky super Supermarket, uh, suggestion that density might be too high, encouragement of no net loss, enforcement beyond arena sites, and low-income housing in sixth cycle housing element, a need for transitional housing for seniors, and a need for live work spaces. We want to sh um, share with you the QR code. This was also included with postcards that got sent to everybody in Larkspur um, and the website link. Uh, and if if you'd like to email your comments directly to us, this is the the email address that that gets all of those comments directly into our document that will be seen and read by HCD. So an example response to public comment. We, we received a, a comment about this um, land use. This is not part of the housing element, but it does relate back to it. So there's someone who is concerned about this program and how it might impact their um, housing security. And, this is about a, a mobile home park, and we have received clear guidance from HCD that we want to retain as much diversity of housing types as possible. So being able to retain um, a mobile home park use as a site is, is very much aligned with what we want to be able to do with this housing element plan. So most likely we will be recommending um, a policy that, that then will um remove this this uh policy from the other chapter of our general plan so that's just an example of direct action that we will be recommending as we go forward based on what we hear from the public so to put a positive spin on on the importance of compliance with HCD's laws for this housing element update and the annual progress reports that follow and uh, making sure that all of our required zonings are complete and that Larkspur remain compliant with all housing laws, that that retains um, your eligibility for grants for housing support, housing development, and for transportation improvements. And just a reminder of why we're doing all of this at its core, we want to make sure that the housing element update, that it represents Larkspur's core values, your vision for the future housing in Larkspur, and that it creates a more inclusive Larkspur community and while also meeting regional and state mandated housing goals. So with that, I'd like to now um, turn our attention to our website and just give a, a quick tour of how how to navigate the site that that we have in the QR code 
It's livinginlarkspur.com. You'll know you're at the right site when you see this fantastic logo uh, that actually um, was drawn by a, a fantastic designer right here in Larkspur, someone who grew up in Larkspur and has returned um, to retire in Larkspur. So this is the main page. You can read the draft here. And the opportunity to read the draft, we've made sure that it's, we've we've attempted to make it as user-friendly as possible. So there's a few different ways that you can share your comments. You can read the entire PDF and then share with us through this email if you want to keep your comments private. There are also opportunities. Um, at, you could you could otherwise leave your full draft comment here and and some folks have, you can see here. Um, some comments that that people have have included in this public way. You can otherwise, if you want to make sure that we understand exactly where what your comment is referencing, we have separated out each chapter, and with each chapter, we've separated out each section. So you can make a comment directly about a particular section of of the uh, of the draft. I want to let you know that the policies can be found in chapter two, the policies, programs, um, and goals are, are in section two. And if if your interest is more about the sites, then um, that is all in the appendices. So when if you go to the housing element draft appendices, And you can then go to Appendix D. This is where vacant and available sites appendix can be found. It will then direct you to um, download the document or it automatically downloads it for you. And within this appendix, you can find um, each of the sites described in, in more detail and with, with more graphics that help you understand what the vision is for the inclusion of each site. And I'm just gonna bring us down to the very last piece here where we have a table that outlines the, um, the zoning, the general plan designation, density, parcel size, and the anticipated count for uh, different affordability levels for each of these sites. So I'm, I'm gonna pause there. Uh, one thing I did go over very quickly is the agenda. Uh, Elise and I thought that this might be a good opportunity tonight, depending on how many people we might have in the audience for uh, Q&A, not, not just comments, but if people want to get feedback from the questions that they have to ask, uh, if, if the committee finds it acceptable, we'd, we'd like to open it for that. I see a nod from Mr. Harrell. Yeah, no, that sounds good. <laughs> If we have folks that want to participate, sure. Yeah, there there is a member of the public here in the audience um, here in the council chambers with his hand raised. We want to take his comments first. Time by me. Yeah, and, and if you, um, James, you could identify yourself, please. I have a number of comments, but I have one question, which I'll ask now. It's my understanding that in addition to the... Uh, uh, required amount, there is some additional margin of uh, housing numbers uh, provided for. Is that correct? And uh, what, what is, how does that work? And what, what is the, the margin? I mean, we started with 170 odd, 179, and now we're down to something else. But I have been told that we are, uh, we are arranging for an amount even above the vast amount that we've given, we've been given in order to provide some sort of a margin for error. So could the numbers there be uh, elaborated on? Thank you. Certainly, thank you for that question. Uh, Elise, I'll get started, but if you wanna jump in, please feel free. Uh, no, go ahead, thanks. Okay, so this is often described as a buffer and HCD guidance is that we provide between 15 and, and 30 percent as a as a minimum, uh, the pro housing community um, application 
one of the points that can be awarded is for providing up to 150%. What we need to understand as a base note, though, is that this is about capacity. So it's it's not that there would be that many units necessarily built within within this eight year cycle, but what it enables is it protects the city in in many different ways. One of them is uh, there is a um, there is a requirement with each development that there be analysis to to ensure that the capacity for all of these affordability levels and numbers of units remains available for that total count. So. Uh, for instance, if a if a property were to be developed at a less density than what is um, anticipated, then uh, or and or if they were if it were to be developed with less numbers of affordable units, then the city would have a responsibility, an obligation to show to HCD that that capacity remains possible for the the full arena that would be. Uh, remaining after that after that development is constructed. So, if if it's found that the capacity is not there, then you have a very short period of time to potentially maybe even rezone um, in order to make that capacity available. So we we want you to be able to be much more thoughtful and engaged about those kinds of land use decisions. And uh, and another consequence would be a, a full mid-cycle review, which is nearly akin to just creating a whole new housing element update. So uh, we're trying to help you avoid those kinds of consequences. What is, Elise, anything you'd like to add? What is the percentage and, and what is the, the number? He's asking what's the percentage and what's the number? Oh, sure. Of course. Yeah. Let's get precise. I apologize. So the 15 to 30, the 15 to 30 percent is what um, what is recommended by HCD. We have at least 50 percent capacity um, in addition to the to the arena number, um, which keeps us eligible for the pro housing community and uh, program and for all of the grants that would would come with that. So that's 50% of what? What is the actual number? I mean, is it 75 well, or 50 or 30 or? I apologize, I don't have that number memorized. Let me, I, I do have it in right here. So we're at 197% is, is the, number that we're starting with with this preliminary draft. And we wanted to make sure that there would be enough room for some sites to potentially be taken off the list. There are some sites that we are now coming to realize would be less feasible than anticipated. So it's a lot easier through this process to take sites off than it is to begin adding sites. Well, is it your plan to to continue to try to have 50% more, even though the recommended range is 15 to 30%? As I mentioned, that does keep Larkspur eligible to be a pro-housing community within designated pro-housing community. So that keeps you um, open to all kinds of grants. So in the end, in the end, the funny thing is, is, is if you, if you, make yourself open to more capacity, it will likely have the result of fewer buildings needed in order to maintain your compliance with the RENA number. I have some concerns with that, but I, I can get into that later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. If, is there, if there's anyone else who has questions, um, please raise your hand from the audience. And then we could just start taking public comment. And I'm looking for any raised hands from our attendee list in the Zoom meeting. I currently don't see any raised hands. So if, if the committee would like, would, should we start accepting public comment? Is everyone okay with that? Okay. Um, I don't know, Mr. Holmes, would you like to begin or? Uh, Ms. Simonian, I have quite a number of comments. So uh, actually, uh, understanding that the standard punctilio is for the uh, 
audience comments to be taken first and then the online comments, I would certainly be willing to follow the online comments in this case. Thank you. Okay, with that, um, if there's anyone in the audience that wants to make a comment on the housing element, um, please raise your hand and we'll call on you. I'm not seeing any hands raised. It's back to you, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Allison also, whom I, I didn't greet previously, and I apologize for that. I, I, I'm half blind because I been, haven't been able to go and get new glasses during the pendency of the pandemic, so please bear with me there. Uh, just with respect to the uh, uh, annexation uh, of the San Quentin-related property, uh, in, in response to uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Haroff's comment, I would point out that current, that on page 2-24, uh, current uh, uh, policy or program H3.0 provides for um, the 224, it's specifically, program H3.0, it specifically says the city will annex and rezone the 85 acres of vacant land over the city of California on the San Quentin Peninsula. So if there are new issues arising to that, then that is that uh, policy or program is going to have to be be altered. Um, there's much to be said in favor of this uh, proposal, this uh, draft, and uh, I uh, well, but my comments may seem unbalanced because I'm going to express, I'm going to focus on my concerns because if I were to comment on the uh, the, the benefits of it or the advantage of it, which include being well written and well organized, it would it would take twice as long. Uh, but um, I, th the first thing I would say, and perhaps this following up on something that uh, Mr. Hoff said, is that uh, there are there are two the con the context for this plan is twofold number one we all recognize that the 197 units is way out of line and way beyond what we had before and uh i mean you know some might might uh, uh liken it to something that a, a mad despot would would propose uh in any event uh the second point that is that as uh Mr. Hoff mentioned we made a specific appeal to the state for relief, or I think it was eight bank, for relief uh, based on very real constraints that we have. And so that this draft should encompass and acknowledge the constraints and concerns that were in that appeal, we should say nothing in this draft that essentially gives the lie or suggests that that uh, what we said was uh, an exaggeration, and that those concerns, I think, should inform the tone and tenor of this update, uh, because so much of it now seems to uh, almost uh, embrace the uh, extreme with enthusiasm, the extreme demands we are making rather than candidly acknowledging them for being an extremely challenging, uh, 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 an extremely challenge, a uh, great challenge for us. Our tone on tenor should not be defiant, but it nevertheless should be realistic. And uh, I'll just start with a couple of. Uh, just starting the front, the first two paragraphs on page one one start with what I would call uh, a a very wrong uh, approach. It says Larkspur is a community with a high quality of life, a renowned school system, and an urgent need for more housing. Well, I think the, the delete an urgent need for more housing. I think that is what the attorneys would say is called. Uh, a um, an admission against interest that at the very least is debatable and it simply uh, shouldn't uh, be in there uh, furthermore as one reads through the first few paragraphs one does not see any attempt to take advantage of this 
uh, housing element to tell Larkspur's story, which is a good story right at the outset. For instance, we should say right at the outset, words to this effect, Larkspur is an old built out working class, uh, former working class suburb and summer resort surrounded by steep uh, slopes and water. Its layout and infrastructure date largely from the Victorian era to the Mad Men era. Uh, this, uh, our infrastructure, uh, we have, it should specifically state that we have $30 million in storm drain requirements. And apparently <clears throat> we now have a report saying we have millions upon millions of dollars related to fire uh, rehabilitation of our fire structures. Uh, it's important to make these comments right up front so that we set the scene and we make it clear that this community is not uh, rolling in dough. Um, we um, uh, have to uh, say that uh, the, the demands of the state do not consider really any of the unique uh, challenges that uh, that Larkspur pointed out in its appeal. We also should state right up front that the challenges that we uh, noted uh, in our appeal are of the same type which were mentioned in the um, in, in the new legislate, which are to be taken account of in the new legislation, uh, which uh, uh, was, I think, passed at the behest of our uh, assemblyman Levine, and uh, which will require in the future that they be taken account of in the RENA allocations, although they were not part of the RENA allocations here. This, of course, is for the purpose of, of gently suggesting that uh, we, uh, may, you know, what we are doing here uh, may not uh, be the, uh, the last uh, word. Uh, we also need to state in uh, right up front that Larkspur uh, 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 were, was planning for high density housing and allowing high density housing decades ago before it was fashionable. We need to point out that we never did uh, what they call um, uh, revenue planning, uh, favoring uh, commercial rather than uh, housing, and that we have continually uh, pushed for inclusionary uh, housing to, to provide for a diversity of housing. Now, some of this is mentioned uh, further on, uh, but it really should be put here right, right up front. Uh, this needs to be an advocacy document, uh, and, and it also needs to be defensive. And it, it, it should avoid anything that can be construed as uh, an admission against interest. And just think about it in a, in a lawsuit. Uh, the first thing, if anybody sues us, the first thing they're going to quote is say, Larkspur itself conceded that we have an urgent need for housing. S delete anything that can be construed as a, uh, an admission against interest. And I will just make a, uh, uh, an offer that I would be happy to meet with staff or the, uh, the um, uh, consultant and tr help to identify things that could uh, 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 be construed as an admission against interest. Uh, you need um, uh, to, uh, 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 you need the, the reader, uh, yeah. so much of this I say is really too optimistic uh, in, in its tenor. Uh, I think that uh, Larkspur, we also have to point out that Larkspur has lever consistently leveraged its planning to um, uh, enable uh, types of uh, uh, affordable housing, uh, such as the um, the the housing oh gosh I'm forgetting what it is but it's down uh, it's it's down near Bonaire uh, I um uh, think that uh, let's look let's look just at uh, page one one again let us not refer throughout the document to housing needs that is a concession and a value judgment let us refer instead to uh, uh, compliance with mandates um, we um, uh, in, in the so I would delete most of the first and, and second uh, paragraph. Uh, I think uh, on on one point three um, we should it should delete uh, statements uh, such as uh, in the third line here. Larkspur must play its part to meet the growing demand for housing. This just isn't necessary to to make those uh, kinds of of specific uh, statements. Don't agree with what 
is being uh, imposed on us. Uh, again, everything here should be drafted and, and uh, prepared through the lens of our, our appeal. Uh, we should delete the lengthy discussion on pages right up front on pages one through four of, of segregation. Uh, segregation is a loaded term that conjures up uh, Jim Crow and George Wallace. Uh, we, we at, at most, almost all of this, it discusses Marin County and the Bay Area as a whole. We should simply say that, we, I mean, first of all, one has to distinguish between de facto and de jure segregation. We should say there is no evidence uh, of Larkspur ever uh, having de jure se segregation co uh, uh, committed by the city and uh, otherwise any uh, type of uh, de facto segregation uh, appears not to be any different than or to have no different uh, reasons than reasons applicable alike to all of Marin County uh, and indeed uh, all of, uh, of the Bay Area. Uh, uh, do not say anything to suggest that Larkspur has uh, uh, furthered the segregation. Uh, I would delete most of what is on page uh, one through six. Uh, the transit discussion uh, is completely, uh, completely misses some very, very important uh, information, specifically how, uh, how transit has withered uh, in Larkspur over the last few years, I'm looking, hunt, trying to hunt here the, the page referencing uh, transit, uh, but um, the fact is that um, we, uh, uh, Larkspur, unlike w the way it's been for the last 50 or 60 years, we have no direct uh, service to San Francisco, no commuter service to San Francisco in Central Larkspur. Central Larkspur has no non-commuter service to San Francisco. Uh, since 2021, and uh, transit is worse that therefore now with respect to most of Larkspur and certainly Central Larkspur than in any time since the last uh, 60 uh, or, or 70 uh, years. Um, it, on page 1.13, uh, public participation to affirmatively, part two, part affirmatively furthering for fair housing. Anyway, I would delete the third paragraph regarding to a general feeling of engagement fatigue with a consistent message received through outreach. Uh, there's really no reason to 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 put put that that in there. Uh, another thing I'm I'm going out of order, but uh, the uh, document again as part of telling our story, you need to put in photos of the extent of our current high density housing and pictures of the high density housing that we have approved uh, throughout uh, the city. And that there are, I mean, a good start is on the cover, but we actually need pictures to show right up front what we have been doing for all these years, pictures of, of Bon Air, pictures of Larkspur Landing. So they, uh, uh, we, we should show pictures of the infill uh, on, on King Street. Um, we should show uh, other uh, pictures uh, uh, that, that will sh put right in front of the reviewer's eyes exactly the kind of density we, we, which we have always been, uh, uh, which we have always been, been allowing. Um, I, uh, in, on page 1-10 and elsewhere, Please put the exact amount of the huge amount of, the, of, of money that we have waived for the home key project over on South Elysio. That's a mind boggling amount. It's referred to a couple of times and once the, so that they see exactly how much we put up and be sure to mention that this is not only out of pocket fee. This is not only in-house staff fees. It's also out of pocket. We've we waived a huge amount of fees there. Put that detail in. Uh, on page 1-13, uh, well, I think I mentioned that. Uh, we really don't need references to, to engagement fatigue. Uh, with regard to page 2-2, um, as I think... Uh, I think that's where the, it meant, talks about transit-oriented development, and we should again stress how little transit we have now relative to, to the past. Um, 
the um, uh, it, on on page uh, three three here uh, when when we uh, talk about uh, um, I, I think uh, generally I'm uh, let's see am I am I on the right uh, page here um, uh, I'm yeah two dash three here uh, I'm um Miss uh, excuse me um Mr Holmes I'm wondering these comments are excellent but. Maybe if you could submit them in writing, I think your point is well taken that that the um, you know the city has uh, been taking steps and measures which should be acknowledged, and and you know I I, I think the point has been made. Well, okay, I but I, I'll I'll give you some material relating to the uh, specific uh, policies and programs. Uh, program H one A, I remove the reference to lot subdivisions. Uh, Advertising ADUs is fine, but given large for generally small sizes, I don't think we should be pushing uh, to open a real can of worms for subdivisions on small lots, even though it may technically be allowed. Uh, page 2-7, program H1E regarding parking. Uh, delete the reference to uh, not requiring free parking. This militates against our uh, equity uh, uh, interests because it would just result in more costs for people. So don't suggest that we are going imply that we may uh, require pay, payment uh, for parking. On page 2-17, I would delete policy H3-7 farm worker housing. Uh, this is irrelevant to Larkspur because we have no uh, farms here. Uh, later on, uh, on page C13, I think it recognizes that, but right up front, we have have to point out that this is utterly irrelevant uh, to, to, to Larkspur. Uh, I think that uh, we should, um, on page 217, delete the references to single family neighborhoods. Uh, there's no uh, reason to uh, say that uh, we are going to prioritize affordable housing in single family uh, neighborhoods. We should just say uh, prioritize affordable housing. Uh, I, um, le let's see, I think that uh, with regard on page B3, with regard to cost burdens, we should add that we don't know if these cost burdens uh, uh, where people are paying more than 30% uh, of, of their income for housing represent uh, low income people or high income people who have simply bought extensive housing. This is the kind of additional information that we have to include to put things in, in context. Uh, on page uh, B2, uh, the, the um, uh, I would uh, say, uh, we should we should delete um, on on page B B two. Uh, it says uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, finding the specific reference that uh, that that I have here. Um, it, it, uh, oh yeah. Throughout, throughout the wherever we have favorable information, uh, we should put it. Suggest that we should consider putting it in boldface. So it uh, uh, favorable information specifically regarding to uh, Larkspur. Uh, on on page B seven, there is a reference to exclusionary zoning here. It says race and ethnicity. It says uh, these patterns are shaped both by market factors and government actions. Then we go on to say such as exclusionary zoning, discriminatory lending, etc. Delete that. Just put a period after government actions. Again, we don't want to do anything to suggest that that we have been involved in any of, of these objectionable uh, uh, things. Mr. Holmes, can, can I, Mr. Holmes, can I make a request? Um, have you submitted these comments? I, I um, have not. Uh, and to be honest with you, uh, I have a limited I have limited ability both respecting typing and um, and. Uh, 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 e e internet access. So I'm taking advantage of the opportunity here to to sure. provide this. I may I, 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 I may at some I, I'm point just wondering... provide more, uh, but um, I did want to go over the uh, the high spots, and I still want to talk about the the sites and uh, some of the I, some of the points regarding constraints. So if uh, I if I could just make two suggestions. One one is that um, if you could possibly hand that over to our city clerk, um, we can make sure, I think you're making some great points. And in summary, um, I think you've, you've tried to highlight that we should make some affirmative statements of what's been done 
and uh, your particular position is that the appeal against the arena numbers needs to be woven in. So I, I want to appreciate the bigger picture. I'm afraid that with you know many audience members who may want to comment, you know we normally set a time limit, and and I I I, I do think I get it, and I'd love to read your points in in detail if if they could be possibly put on the website, it would benefit everybody. So maybe if we could just take two more minutes and wrap it up because we we didn't set a time limit. Well, uh, if you would like to, if you would like to, um, to uh, uh, open it up to other comments, I would be happy to to reserve time uh, to um, to come back later if uh, we uh, are, if, if, you know, if, if after after the other comments are over with. Yeah, Elise, thank you very much. Th th this is Kevin. Yeah. Could I maybe interject here for a moment and? Um, I would appreciate it if the speaker did not quite step down for a moment, uh, although he may not have heard me. Um, I think many of the, oh, there you are. Um, I think many of the comments we've just heard are, in my mind, uh, well taken. Um, there are some where, you know, we can have discussion, but I think actually, by and large, uh, there's little that I found objectionable um, about the points that have been raised. To some extent, this is, uh, the comments are editorial in nature, in terms of the way the document is written. And I think it is probably appropriate for us to um, uh, do some more work. Um, to focus on the language that is used in the document to make sure that it is a document that is being prepared and presented to the public and to our friends at HCD um, uh, as a document that is intended to comply with our legal obligations as opposed to editorializing um, in other ways. And I think it would be perhaps worthwhile this is a suggestion um, to maybe sit down and have an editing session to make sure that those concerns are adequately represented and reflected in this document, because I'm not sure that they are at this point. Um, I think we have time to do that. I hope so. Um, but Mr. Holmes is correct that, that we are doing something kind of because we have to. <laughs> Um, and I think this is the point that I was making before. Um, I don't think we're in the business of pumping up the goals and expectations of those who are uh, behind some of the requirements that we are trying to comply with. Um, we do need to comply with the law. That's all we need to do. Uh, we don't need to be advocating beyond that. And I do worry a little bit that the language that is reflected in the documents that currently stands takes us in a direction that I don't know that our community would necessarily encourage. So I, I would suggest that maybe a sit down session um, where we just kind of go through it page by page and look at the way the language is paired. So I don't think we've really had that opportunity to do that at this point. We've really focused on the policies and the need to comply with our legal obligations. That's certainly been my focus. Um, but in terms of a document that goes out into the public, I think we need to be very careful about the language that we use. So I want to thank Mr. Holmes for having brought that to our collective attention. Okay, at yeah. the end, I do have some comments about the water and some of the some of the sites. But as I say, I'll be happy to uh, sit down and uh, so that other folks who are not who are online uh, can uh, can comment. Yeah. Could, I, could I just ask a, a question of of Andy uh, related to uh, you know to Mr. Um, Holmes's presentation? Um, can you hear me, Andy? Yes, I, I apologize. I just okay. sneezed my. <laughs> Headset yeah, yeah, right yeah. off. <laughs> I take the uh, so, and and also relates to uh, to to Kevin's uh, comment uh, just now as well. So, um, with regard to the essentially the tone of the document, um, what Mr. Holmes is you know is suggesting um, is uh, is something a little bit closer to advocacy of a position uh, that the city council has. Uh, the committee has and reflecting what the reflecting the public's um, stance on uh, on the on the housing element. So, from your experience, though, um, 
what would be the uh, what would be the expectation of HCD, and how would uh, how would uh, how do other communities uh, sort of walk this line between sort of strict compliance and and, and advocacy uh, of a position which might not comport with the strictures from HCD? That's a great question. Um, I'm I'm hearing the word advocacy, and I I I want to make sure that I'm I'm clear on on what you mean by that. If you could just parse well, that out well, a little well, bit. Well, uh, well, I think that you know, you know that uh, what Mr. Holmes is suggesting is that we uh, that we advance a point of view and almost you know, uh, some objections to uh, what is being required of us legally uh, to basically say, look, oh, we're we're doing this, but we're not really happy about doing it. Um, do other do other towns you know incorporate language that suggests something like that? Not not to my certainly I, not with any of the EMC drafts that we put mean, together. How how, yeah. how careful do we have to be? I guess is my is the bottom yes. is the bottom well, line. I, I can say that a, a, not all, but a, a number of the points that were raised are. Um, are points that we brought forward in direct response to what we're seeing in um, in revision request letters out of HCD. So um, not all, certainly not all. Um, there was a lot to uh, comprehend here, but there were certainly like, for instance, farm worker housing that needs to be addressed. If we don't address it, it will be in our revision request letter. Um, there's So there's a number of things that might seem uh, nonsensical. Why is this included? Why why are we taking this tone? Um, for probably 70 to 80% of what was raised today, we're taking this tone because we've been following HCD's guidance closely. And we would love for Larkspur to be the first in Marin to be one and done to get this through and 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 get certified the first time around. Um, so we are we are going beyond what a lot of communities maybe do because a lot of communities wait for that revision request letter. We, we've seen enough of them to, to know how to get ahead of it. We're not going beyond what we've read and understand as particularly for for be, for being a pro housing community. So we're, we're we're holding on to those programs that have been approved by council, um, and beyond that, you know, is there is there room for some n negotiated language and 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 a, a little difference in tone? Certainly, there's room for it, but uh, as we know, for all of those appeals. One was accepted and it had to do with an annexation and it involved a very small number of units that had to be traded from an un unincorporated area to their direct neighbor, which was, a, you know, so it's, um, they've heard the appeals throughout California. Um, they don't find them to be substantiated enough to alter the numbers. Um, it's it's not you know Andy wanted... I, I I hate to jump in but I I sure. appreciate what you're saying here, um, but the appeal that we made was made in good faith, based oh. upon an understanding of the circumstances that we all Understood. felt we were confronting in our local community, and I understand that HCD may have a different view. Um, it obviously has had a different view in its consideration of the appeals that our jurisdiction as well as other jurisdictions have uh, advocated. Um, that said, um, I don't think that's necessarily a reason for us to just say, okay, HCD, you're right. We give up. Uh, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to continue to express the views that we have already put forth in the context of our appeal and in other settings. So I think the comments that we're hearing tonight a little bit are well taken, um, and consistent with the position that our jurisdiction has taken in the past. To the extent that we um, uh, 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 we need to make some revision to language to adjust the tone to reflect the statements and the positions that the, our jurisdiction has taken in the past, I think that's actually appropriate, and I would encourage us to to as a as a as a group to do that. And just one last point before I shut up, um, I understand the motivation to be the one and done. 
Um, it would be nice to minimize the complexity of our engagement in this process by making it easy for HCD to just say, "Oh, great, great, you got a, you did a good, get, did a good job here. You get a gold, gold, gold star for that." Um, I don't think that's necessarily my objective. Um, I think my objective is to make sure that we are preparing and presenting um, a document that reflects the goals and aspirations of our community, as opposed to necessarily the goals and aspirations of HCD. And if there is a conflict between um, where those two lie, I think I personally am willing to accept a, a little bit of um, abrasion between <laughs> the two perspectives. So. Um, Let's keep working on this document. Let's make it a good document. Let's make sure that the tone of the document is not just reflective of what we think will make the HCD staff happy, but what we think will be best representative of the goals and aspirations of our community, because that is who we are working for, not HCD staff. I'm done. Okay. Um could I uh, could I offer uh, a reaction to uh, to Mr. Holmes's uh, the presentation about the transit um, and, and reading the document, I just wanted to be very careful that, you know, not not lose sight of the fact that this is a housing element, it's not a transit element. Nonetheless, I mean, there is some emphasis on um, uh, uh, transit, uh, transit oriented development. And I agree with Mr. Holmes that that that, um, that, that part of the document might um, might benefit from uh, a little bit of beefing up. Um, and um, like Mr. Holmes, I've observed that the the availability of public transit, in fact, has declined um, over the last you know, 20 years. Uh, considerably, the other the other thing is that it's uh, the, the the public transit is very much oriented toward uh, a people who have absolutely have no other option but public transportation, uh, even it, regardless of how inconvenient it might be. Um, and secondly, it really is very much oriented to uh, commute hours, to conventional commute hours, and we know that those are changing. Um, so there's, uh, you know, the number 18 bus will go, you know, a couple of times in the morning, a couple of times in the afternoon, and that's it. Uh, so to get anywhere else, not only to, you know, to San Francisco, but to the, you know, to the East Bay uh, or to other parts of Marin um, is by public transportation is extremely inconvenient, if not impossible. Uh, so um, if we really are emphasizing transit-oriented development, uh, perhaps language that suggests that the city will push uh, the transit authority to um, to really uh, expand its uh, its reach in order for the transit oriented development to be meaningful. You know, it's great to have bus stops, but when there, there are no buses, uh, doesn't really do very much. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I would I would I would maybe add some emphasis on uh, what the city might do to uh, to influence the uh, uh, the transit outlook in Marin. And Dan, just as a footnote, because you ref you referenced uh, Route 18, um, uh, it's actually route, from my perspective because I live in Green Bay. Yeah, it's route, right. It's, it's Route 24. It's Route 24. It's, yeah, which, route 24 which is, is virtually non-existent at this I know, point. I know. My my <laughs> my wife used to depend uh, relentlessly on being able to take the bus into the city to go to work. Uh, that route's dead. It's just not it's just not functional anymore. So. Some, I mean, the, some, of the, some of the assumptions about transit access are no longer relevant. Yeah, and, and there, I mean, there, I, I, could, I could go through example after example. I mean, the, the, the fact that the, the bus from Larchburg to Marin City arrives one minute after the departure of the bus from Marin City to San Francisco. I mean, we get, get, we get stuff like that all the time. So you know, the, tra the public transit is, it is sort of somewhat horrifically uh, in, you know, inefficient. So if we're going to have transit-oriented development. Well, how about the transit piece? Um, can, if I could step in real quick, um, I, I do have a hard stop in five minutes, and I, I just wanted to um, uh, also, um, you know, appreciate all the points that were made earlier. And um, I, I, I do believe that we could edit the document. What I might take some issue with is is um, the final fundamental challenge that. Larkspur does not need housing or does not need affordable housing. I mean, we currently have two ad hoc committees. We have many community members, you know, very concerned about affordability, about rental, about 
mobile homes, and all of these things are part of this document. And, and the supply, as well as the policies H21, H31, H3, C, H, J, all of them really bear on one of the most urgent issues of 2022. So, so I, I wanna be careful not to say we had an appeal letter, let's stick to our guns and let's defend what we've done in the past. Um, I think that's, that's a, a, a public comment that goes against a, a significant policy direction we've already set. We need affordable housing. And I think that's the position of the council. That's my position at least. And I think that the document can be edited to, to uh, you know, not um, yeah, admit against interest and, and to also um, underscore what we have done affirmatively. But the statistics are very clear. There's been almost nothing built in the last decade and before. And housing costs and rental costs are directly correlated to construction and inflation. And, we're, and I think that is in the interest of our community is to seriously look at this document, not as a SB9 or HCD mandate, but something that our kids need, our workers need, affordability is something we need. And this is a eight year cycle. This is, we need band-aids and that's why we have ad hocs. But I, I wanna affirm that, you know, whoever wrote the appeal letter, I, I signed it too, but we do need housing. And, and I hope we can get into some of the more substantive policy pieces. And I do think there's some other public comments. So that's why I made the comment that we open it up and let other people speak. Thank you. Do you wanna call on the next person, um, Allison? Could you probably read their name? Yes, thank you. Our next comment will come from Will Kafer. Uh, good evening, my name is William Kafer. I'm a 36 year, uh, 36 year resident of Larkspur. I live in a single family dwelling, which I own. Um, I wonder if somebody on the board here or on the panel would be able to affirm, uh, is the approximate um, residential uh, uh, occupancy of Larkspur rental? Is that a close number, 60%? Of the residents? Uh, yes, sir. 55%, I think, is 55%. the number I have. Well, you know, typically uh, rental housing is far more reasonable than single family ownership. And uh, it would seem that just that one fact means that Larkspur has made a, uh, is complying with a great effort to make, you know, housing more affordable. If it was 80%, private residents, I could see where, you know, there, there would be a, uh, an outstripping of uh, opportunities for people with lower incomes to live in Larkspur, but it seems if it's closer to 55% that, uh, you know, that that's a great uh, effort, you know, you buy a house in Larkspur, you might have a million dollar mortgage, but to rent a, you know, a condo or an apartment uh, unit, you know, you might be looking at, I don't know, two or $3,000 a month. That's far, far less than somebody buying a million dollar property with a mortgage. So it seems like uh, Larkspur has, uh, you know, a fairly good population of what I would call more moderate housing uh, than uh, if it was all residential uh, private ownership. That's my comment. I also agree with James Holm, too. Thank you. Additional raised hands from our Zoom attendees. If anyone would like to provide additional comments. I see no raised hands at the moment. Well, in that case, and I, can I finish my uh, comments? I will focus rather than on editorial on, on a couple of the substantive issues relating to the uh, law, to the water issue and also to the science. James Holmes again, Larkspur. Uh, for the record, the uh, 18, which I took for 40 years, is totally defunct now. So we have no commuter transit from central Larkspur. 
uh, the the water discussion, uh, which uh, I should have had the page here, but uh, it it strikes me as being quite uh, incomplete. Um, it's uh, overly optimistic in tone. Uh, it fails to clearly state that uh, our water is limited and specifically one, there is no mention of the Marin Grand Jury report that blasted the in inadequacy of Marin's water supply. Uh, two, no mention of the fact that we almost ran out of water in 21. No mention of the fact that uh, all the plans that are being authored, that are being considered, very likely could not be realized within the eight year scope of the current housing element. And finally, there is a reference in the last paragraph to some sort of a regional partnership, and there is absolutely no progress toward that. That regional partnership was just a gleam in the eye of a member of the board who lost his reelection. Uh, so the water, uh, the water constraints really need to be beefed up. Now, turning to the sites, um, I'll focus on, on downtown and central Larkspur. I believe there are way too many high density sites clustered in central downtown, which is a very uh, small uh, area. This really would uh, deviate, uh, this would devastate the area, and I think there has to be a redoubled effort to spread the sites out. For example, I don't know why the old safe, why the, the lots at uh, the commercial sites and medical sites at uh, 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 Magnolia and Bonaire are not called out for possible housing sites. Uh, but in any event, the most objectionable provisions in the downtown area provisions are those that would give up city land, specifically the city parking lot and the right of way to Lucky. And uh, parenthetically, and I didn't get a chance to say it, but I think that we should not uh, pursue or we should seriously soften the uh, policies and programs that relate to the relinquishment of city land, but particularly in the central Larkspur, where we are zoning for large amounts of high density housing surrounding that area, we definitely leave, need to leave that area, uh, not only because it is uh, important, uh, what I'd call breathing space, but because parking is essential. And uh, I think the council members here will recall that just last night we had a long discussion about you know, just six parking lots. So I believe that we should take the city-owned sites off the the uh, the off off the uh, possible development site. Uh, I, it is also a very objectionable to me to allow for the destruction of Larkspur's railroad heritage on the railroad parcel and the um, the uh, 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 the um, uh, American Legion parcel. Uh, those, the, the problems, uh, uh, I mean, those, the, those are essential part of our Larkspur connection and they should be retained in any uh, development. Uh, I am also uh, surprised uh, that uh, Lucky, I, I think Lucky Supermarket should be called out as an asset because, uh, from the standpoint of equity because it provides for more low Food, uh, low cost food and groceries and is almost unique in that respect in an area of high priced groceries. And so I question whether we should be saying anything which would encourage uh, its uh, dis discontinuance. Uh, so uh, I, uh, I, I think that we, what we can cram into downtown Larkspur is uh, really has to be, uh, be be reconsidered. I also, it was unclear to me whether or not additional housing is planned for the vacant site next to the Lark Theater on the other side of Polk, uh, Post Street. Uh, there is a, a site uh, on the other side, on the north side of that vacant lot, but I didn't see anything proposed for that vacant lot, and yet that is a vacant lot. It used to be all the Brazil building site because it was a Victorian built by someone named Brazil. But anyway, if that is not included as a site, that certainly should be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do have another hand raised in the audience. Thank you. Our next comment will come from Ed Jameson. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. 
Thank you. I'd just like to uh, reinforce what uh, Mr. Holmes said uh, very soon, very briefly on the water issue. It's going to be many years before we resolve the dire straits we're presently in. The, uh, the outgoing board members have left us in a great deal of difficulty. I follow this very carefully for the last year. We're not going to fix this problem anytime soon, and I don't know how that relates to what we've been mandated to do, but it's a big problem. And I would like to echo his concerns about Lucky and its access from the Magnolia Avenue. The gas station there, a lot of us depend upon, and we can walk from our homes to that for servicing and such. And the parking lot downtown it will not be an attractive place for people to come and shop or dine here. If it's underneath a residential structure, for example, it will kind of kill the downtown business area. I had expressed my concerns about the downtown uh, locations to you before you may rec recollect that but i just wanted to reinforce mr holmes comments on that thank you raise hands in our audience there's currently no public comment So there's nothing else on the agenda that you need to address unless um, any of you on the committee would like to add any comments before um, adjourning. Um, yeah, uh, Andy, I'm, um, I hope this is uh, this is constructive, but uh, one of the things that did pop out to me um, when we're talking about uh, deed restricted uh, low income housing and um, and uh, certain uh, rent uh, rent controls. Uh, in rent abatement, um, a, a thing that would worry me a little bit in general would be a, a disincentive for proper maintenance of those kinds of uh, of those kinds of buildings. So I was wondering if we, we can include anything uh, in the in the element that uh, whereby the the city of Larsborough and the, through its city council. Uh, would be able to enforce certain standards of maintenance on these buildings so that they, you know, they age properly. Um, I know that I know that Kevin's very familiar with the situation we're in city where there's been a, a vast deterioration of uh, uh, of the subsidized property, um, and we wouldn't want to. I don't think we want to build. Uh, we want to build low income housing, but we want to build low income housing, which is going to be there for a long time, uh, without deterioration. So I was just wondering if there's any language that could be inserted that uh, that that would be a focus uh, of the city uh, within the uh, you know within the context of the housing element. We'll certainly look into that, and we'll also uh, consult with with. David Masonton from ELS, who you've come to know through the odds development and uh, objective design and development standards. And I and I do want to circle back to, to what they've been a huge proponent of, which is the materiality matters. And and yes, exactly. Yes. So uh, the ability to maintain buildings depend hugely on what kinds of materials are allowed and which ones are prohibited and, and how those are. Uh, put together. So um, we're, we're trying to come at it from all ends, but we'll, we'll also look to this idea of maintenance over time. I think that's a great addition uh, for consideration. Thank you. And I wanted to make a quick uh, comment. I just wanted to thank all the, the speakers who came forward. It was very informative, and I, I think it'll invite me to reread the document. The downtown areas is a specific concern for me, too. Um, I'm wondering if, you know, uh, in general, we could flesh out maybe at another meeting. Uh, again, one of my big priorities coming into this was, was in the policies that have to do with affordability and um, specifically policy H21, preserve existing affordability housing stock. So I, I read through the document and I, I didn't see a lot of detail or maybe I'm missing it. And, you know, I think the Gantt chart, I, I didn't, you know, get to peruse all, you know, that's multi hundred pages, but um, I'm, I'm really wanting to know what we can do to uh, present, you know, preserve naturally occurring affordable housing and and to prevent displacement. Um, I do think that's a, a, a acute issue, but it also has chronic roots. And we didn't get to that tonight. I, I do think all the other comments were very valid, but I want to make sure, make sure that 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 we do get to that. And uh, and again, thank you, also Andy and and Elise, uh, you know, for all the work. I know it's it's a lot, so um, appreciate it, and uh, a lot of homework ahead for me. Thank you.
Thank you. Does anyone want to adjourn, um, make a motion to adjourn the meeting? Uh, Elise, this is Kevin. I'd be happy to make that motion, but I'd also like to um, volunteer to have maybe uh, uh, further conversations with, with James or whoever else would like to um, work with us and maybe do a little bit of editing on the document to make sure that the document in terms of its tone and language um, reflects what we are truly trying to accomplish um, in complying with HCD requirements, um, as opposed to maybe going beyond that. Um, but beyond that, uh, that offer, I'd be happy to make a motion to adjourn. And I'd be happy to second it. So all in favor. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've we already <laughs> lost one. Thanks. Thank you all. And and I'd like to thank everyone who is participating or listening in the audience and appreciate seeing um, a crowd at one of these meetings. Thank you, Elise. Thanks to everyone for participating. Good night, everybody. See you next time.